the evening and the morning helps you identify a day and that was day one the first day the evening and the morning helps you identify a day and that was day one the first day shalom everyone it's a lock here today's date is july no it's june 14th 2017 my lesson is entitled the day starts this is another lesson teaching again about when the day starts because of that famous verse in the book of Genesis in the creation story that leads some to believe that a day starts from evening until evening. See, those who are looking for truth have to just keep searching. We've heard a lot of wrong teaching over the years and it's clear that the time is drawing nearer to the end of the world as it is before the Creator moves to restore His chosen people and uh, glorifies His name and uh, lets truth be seen again. But the people who are really searching are going to in this time begin to find more and more of the truth we've just been told so many things that are incorrect because everyone who was teaching it just couldn't see clear enough and we've all suffered from that all of us over the years from when we were children learning about the Bible and so on including myself but then you've got those who are teaching it intentionally the wrong way but if we keep searching and seeking the Most High, we're going to move into the truth. Now, look here, that famous verse from Genesis chapter 1 and verse 5. And Elohim called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And some have used that along with other scriptures to say that a day is from sundown to sundown the following day so it starts from the evening and it goes into night or it includes night and it includes the morning and it includes the day and so on so it's going a full 24 hour period now in my couple of videos before this maybe two or three videos where I talked about this topic I've shown with different scriptures and different arguments how this cannot be correct and that the scriptures, even when we look at different translations, is saying that it, it he was just basically showing that morning and uh, evening were used to open and close the day or used as some kind of a guide to explain or to show what day really was so that day can be identifiably marked by the presence of the morning and the evening it's like when you're doing billing and you use a plumb line you don't really want the plumb line itself you're just using that to mark out and measure so it is that morning and evening marks out and measures that which is day which is based on light and the sun gover governs that light or daytime and nothing in the Hebrew shows that this verse from Genesis 1 verse 5 is dealing with a full 24 hour period. So I want to show some more stuff. I was studying something else and ended up coming across this. And I thought I would just stop and uh, do this recording. So it's called The Day Starts. Now, I'll go from this first book. I'm, I'm reading, I was looking up on John chapter 4 to teach something from that. And uh, so I'll start with, I'm not going to talk about John 4 here, but I have to mention something from it, from this commentary I've been reading from Matthew Henry's commentary. And uh, he says here in John 4, actually it's better if I just read the verse 
to show what he was talking about quickly. Hold on. Okay, the verse is John chapter 4, verse 6. It says, Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Now, if you look at the sixth hour, you're dealing with about midday or noon time when you normally have lunch. Matthew Henry's commentary. Hear what this commentary is saying. It says, We have here our Lord Jesus laboring under the common fatigue of travelers. He was wearied with his journey, so he was tired. Because it was the sixth hour, just like the Bible had said, the New Testament Bible, it was the sixth hour, the time of the heat of the day. Therefore, he was weary. So, the sixth hour, he's telling you that it had basically high heat of the day. So, this very hot time, because it's what, midday, this is no night time, the sixth hour. Now, the sixth hour, if, as other people show, the sixth hour is about noon time, so you're dealing with like 12 o'clock. So that would mean then they're starting to cut from what we would call 6 um, a.m. as the start of the day. So the sixth hour, you add on another six to that to make it the sixth hour. So you're going from 6 a.m. You count six more hours on top of that from 6 a.m. 7 a.m. would be one hour, 8 a.m. two, 9 a.m. would be the third hour. 10, 11, 12 a.m. would be this, sorry, 12 p.m. or noon time would be the sixth hour. So when it says it was the sixth hour, he was very tired because it was hot and so on, so he got thirsty, so he sat by the well. Which, even in the New Testament, then it is showing in this verse here that the sixth hour of the day being a time when it was very hot, high heat, and he was thirsty and so on, that's letting you know that the day did not start from the evening before at sundown or would not be the sixth hour it would be somewhere probably up in the teens of hours so let's say if you think of the sun sun down at the evening starting if the day starts from the evening before before his sixth hour at noontime. And let's say sundown, evening is coming, it's starting to get dark. Let's say it's like six, seven, eight o'clock. Um, to make it easier to count, let's say 6 p.m. So then 6 p.m. to 12 midnight, when people are sleeping, that would be six hours. And then 6 a.m., another six hours to make it 6 a.m. when people are getting up for work um, or dawn. That would be 12 hours. So when he, when there's high heat of the sun and he's sitting on it this time, which would be about lunchtime, that's another tw uh, six hours added onto that. That's 18 hours of daytime. So if the day starts, if the day is 24 hours and it starts from the evening before to the next evening, then this would not be the sixth hour of the day. It would not say it like that. It would say it is the 18th hour of the day because the day started at 6 p.m. or at the start of the evening before. But it doesn't say that. It says the sixth hour of the day because the day starts in the morning when the sunlight is coming in. That's what marks the start of the day. It's when the night has gone and um, the light is coming in. You get the morning showing that the night has passed and uh, with, uh, you're still going to have a little bit of light coming in with morning because the night is going away. But the stronger or the, the, more, um, the more evident amount of light in the morning time at dawn is showing the start of the day. The day is starting now. And then you move into stronger light or stronger sunlight as the hours go on through the day and then the 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 atmosphere where you're at would get warmer so that's the sixth hour now look at this other verse here from 
the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 15. We know the whole day of Pentecost and so on, and they thought these people were junk speaking in tongues. Then it says in verse 14 and 15 actually, but Peter, trying to deal with the whole situation, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. The third hour. So he's trying to tell them it is too early for drinking. Nobody's selling all the stuff and drinking up so early in the morning and so on. It's like, you know, it's the third after day. It's too early, he's trying to say. So they're not drunk. This cannot be the explanation is what he's saying. So the third of the day then, if you go with generally about 6 a.m., that means it's 9 a.m. when he's talking about this stuff. The third hour of the day. And if you go with the counting I just mentioned before, if it was like counting the day from evening to evening, starting the day from the evening before this day of Pentecost, tongue speaking, then to midnight would be six hours, to 6 a.m. would be six hours. And the third hour of the day that he's talking about, that would make it 15 hours. So he would not say it is the third hour of the day, day he would say it is the 15th hour of the day because the day would have started the evening before but since the day started roughly around 6 a.m he's telling them that 7 a.m would be one hour 8 a.m two hours 9 a.m three hours it's the third hour of the day so the day they knew the day started with the coming in of light in the morning so it is a misunderstanding for for people to teach that the day starts um, from evening to evening because they read that understanding from Genesis chapter 1 verse 5 and the evening and the morning was the first day. No, that's not what it means. It simply means, as I've said before, the evening and the morning um, showed what a day was or completes a day or helps or the evening and the morning helps you identify a day and that was day one the first day the evening and the morning helps you identify a day and that was day one the first day now let's look here in this other this is the interpreter's dictionary of the bible and look at what it's saying here for for dawn a common noun usually rendered in the KJV as morning. That's telling you then that day is coming on, right? And uh, if you look at the word day, they're saying it means this day, um, KJV inexactly, um, it's talking about light. So again, dealing with light because the most I was dealing with light. He named day based on the presence of light so day has to do with light time not dark time which would be night so day has to do with the presence of light they say also it's a division of time there are three principal uses of the term a the time of daylight so day means the time of daylight from sunrise to sunset notice they're not saying from sundown to sundown the following um you know meaning from one sundown to the following sundown which would then go overnight but they say it's the day is from is a time of daylight from sunrise to sunset and notice also that they did not say day is the time of daylight and low moonlight because if they said it that way then they're including overnight but they're not trying to include that because that's not what it includes day does not include moonlight from from like overnight when you're sleeping as con day from sunrise to sunset as contrasted to night and they give some scriptures here one by the reading genesis 1 verse 5 8 22 acts 20 31 etc the day in this sense was divided into morning noon and evening again notice that it is not talking about night there um now listen to this very important thing actually let me read this other one psalm 
55. Okay, well, they're saying evening and morning at noon. And at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. Because I guess he's going to be sleeping through the night. So he's not praying while he is sleeping. But he's praying in daytime because daytime is when he is awake. And so he can pray because he is awake and aware of what he is doing and so on. When he's sleeping at night, he is just time to sleep. So they said here now, before the New Testament era, there was no division of the day into hours. So you see what's happening is with the passing of time, things changed until they come up to our time here now when they're saying a day starts at 12 midnight or 12.01 a.m. And uh, it's a 24 hour period that defines day and it goes up until 12 midnight after that or 11.59 p.m. Something like that. No, that's just a modern time because the more time runs on, the more deception creeps into the world and the more changes are made and the more world rulers change up all kinds of things for their benefits, for their purpose. Just like they, each empire that comes in over time in history wants to change the maps of the world because of political advantages that it might give them. And they'll draw one country smaller or bigger than another, things like that. So that's what they're doing too with changing how people view time. And so they've made it to be like a 12-hour time spot um, for day, I mean a 24-hour um, time period for the day. But that's not what it was before. So they said before the New Testament era, there was no division of the day into hours. No division. So he's saying that basically in the Old Testament, they didn't look at it hard and fast like certain amount of hours in the day. It just went by the sun. Now we would generally think of it in terms of hours, yeah, for sure. And the you know, but it was not um, it was not hard and fast looked at as uh, so many hours and so many hours all the time. It, it just went by. It just went by the the what the sun was doing. The sun came up while it's daytime. That kind of thing. Right? It just went by what the sun, the light of the sun was doing. And then the day would close out whenever the sun, you know, tried to give way to the night time and the moon, to let the moon operate. So there was no division of the day into hours. Although Nehemiah 9.3 speaks of fourths of a day. Usually designations of periods in the day were sunrise, the heat of the day, the cool of the day, sunset, etc. That's how they dealt with it. In the New Testament, the day as the period of light becomes symbolic of salvation, righteousness. Okay, I don't want that part. Okay, well, this is the interpreter's diction of the Bible again. Look what it says to define hour. I'll just jump right to the part I want. The Old Testament, for the word hour, as in hours of the day, the Old Testament knows no system of equal hours for dividing the day. No system of equal hours. It's just going by the light. That's what I'm saying. It's going by what the sun is doing. So it just, there's no system of equal hours. Like how we have now, um, hard and fast 24 hours. It's just, um, it's just based on what the sun is doing, you know, and the presence of light. The New Testament designation of a definite period in places like Matthew 20, verse 1 to 12, and Mark 15, verse 25. Um, so they, they try to use some definite period to try to mark out an hour or hours of the day, they said. But it's also used loosely in Matthew 8, verse 13, or metaphorically in other places such as Matthew 26, verse 45. Listen to this part now. By New Testament times, the Hebrews were counting 12 hours each in the day and in the night. So you see, they're telling you before that long before this, they didn't hard and fast mark a particular hours to constitute a day. It just basically went by what the sun was doing. The sun is coming in, it's daytime, the sun is going away then. And, and to keep that in mind, I remember Joshua um, talked about sun stand still and the sun hates and moon stay in the valley of Agilon. And then it says, 
and the sun hastened not to go down for about the space of a whole day. So basically, it, if it if if it stays for about the time when they would normally say this time corresponds to what they normally measure a day by the by the time that the sun would be working for that same amount of time or same amount of hours, they now because the sun does not go down in this case for about a whole day, they continue to call it day. They don't call it night. They continue to call it day because the sun is still working because he made the sun work by calling on the Most High and giving a command. So that, so because the sun continued to work, they don't say, well, it's 12 midnight and the sun is still shining, but we know it's nighttime. No, they still call it day because even though we would normally have thought of it as nighttime because it's 12 midnight, because the sun still continued to work, night never came in, so there is no night. So they're saying the sun hastened not to go down about the space of a whole day. So that seems to me like it's saying you got more day or another day, like back to back an additional day so there was no night right there it's just another day that happened and notice that if it's another day that happened if the sun hastened not to go down that means that the the mark out time like the mark in time would be the morning which i've told you about and the mark out time would be the evening to close out the day. Notice that evening did not happen anymore, but the sun hastened not to go down in order to bring in the mark out time of evening to mark out a boundary to say this is when day is ending. It hastened not to go down, so no evening came in, but the sun just continued to work. And so since there was no presence or coming in of evening, night could not be identified at that time. So they said the sun hastened not to go down. So they let you know no evening happened at the time when it normally should have happened. Because night wasn't coming on. Actually, let's read, let's read that here from Joshua chapter 10. We'll read verse... 12 and 13. So they're fighting. Then it says here, Then spake Joshua to the Most High in the day when the Most High delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. So he says, Stand thou still. Look at the Hebrew word there when he's saying stand thou still. Damam. It means to be silent, to be still, to wait. In other words, don't go away. It also means destroyed. So it's telling you that there is a destroying or a negation or some kind of uh, um, no progress in its pattern of normal regular service. It's going to stay right here right now. Its regular service will not be changed. It won't move on to doing the rest of what it's supposed to do for that day, which would mean to start to go away so that evening can come in which would then bring on the night. So he says, Son, stand thou still, or continue to do what you are doing now and delay anything else that you would normally do. Stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon, so he speaks to the moon as well, in the valley of Ajalon. So he's telling also the moon to do a similar thing as the sun has been commanded to do. Moon, remain, in the valley that where you are. Verse 13, And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until um, the people had avenged themselves. So the moon stayed. Again, Hebrew word, Ahmad. It means to stand, remain, endure, take one stand. Um, a standing attitude, uh, um what else is it saying? Tarry, delay, remain, continue, abide. So it's going to delay its coming in 
or if you're dealing with continue and abide, endure, persist, be steadfast, it's going to endure or abide in what it is doing at this time when he prays, when he's praying, which means wherever you are right now, moon, abide right there or continue to be right there. Persist or endure in that spot. Do not proceed any further to coming over here, moving out of that valley area where you are to come and rule over nighttime or rule over darkness. Stay, remain right there. And so the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. Notice he does not say it hasted not to go down about a whole night because the sun was his focus. Even though he mentions moon, the sun was his focus because it was sun that he needed to deal with because he needed light or daytime and light is what is used to deal with or, or govern over day. That's why the Creator made that in Genesis chapter one, chapter 1. So because the sun is going to give that which is day, because it's giving light, then because he wants more light or daytime to fight and win, when they can, you know, continue the battle in the daytime, easier to see, then he prays for what he wants, which is the sun to stand still to give him the daytime. And then he makes it clear that the moon should not try to come into this. So moon stay as well. And there's all kinds of talk about scientists saying that uh, somehow they cannot be accounted for in history. And some people say it may have been Joshua's day. It's like somehow there's some kind of interruption in the counting of the days when they look back in history and running it now through their computer systems and whatever. So... So it's, yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty clear there. So if we get back to this commentary now, by New Testament times, they were counting 12 hours each in the day and in the night. But that's because time was changing. So they were going hard and fast with 12 hours and 12 hours, which is now what we get today with the 24 hours. It was changing and has changed right now. But that's not how it was originally. It was just by the movement of the sun. So if the sun was going to do something different or so, you know, like, like some days the sun seems to go away uh, like half an hour sooner or something like that. So you're not getting no hard and fast 12 hours or for a day or 24 hours for a day the way they measure it now. It's just when the sun comes and goes. And so you measure it by that. So they started counting 12 hours for each uh, for, for the day and 12 hours in the night. Sundials and water clocks were in use for marking the hours. And see, w with the more coming in of their technological systems, it helped to harden the counting of the hours as well. Um, and we see even in this time of computers, computers, you know, with the way that they've got this digital stuff now, um, the pre presence of light and darkness helps you to determine how electrical systems work um, and computers and digital systems so that it's an on-off system for those who understand all this digital stuff. Presence of light means it's on, darkness means it's off, and so it's a hard and fast stuff. And so when you're getting something like that, measuring a day, it's going to have to work with some kind of night, you know, if you deal with the whole digital and analog system, for those who know that you can kind of get an understanding where an analog system might more be a little bit more lenient. It's like with the whole, like when you deal with the old time readers with the the, the calls that they're using and the, the dial that you have to turn with your hand, um, you can kind of gauge um, to tune into a, uh, like a radio station channel a little bit more easier because when the, sis the signal seems to be a little bit weak you can still pick up on it if you can turn and tune slowly but with the digital system it's just the presence of on or off signal and when they cap the signal at a certain level it must be at this level to be on or off once it, you know it, it's, it's just more it changes things and just, just the same with this measuring of time like this. 
for a full 24 hours and so on or a full 12 hours it just changes things a whole lot but originally it wasn't like this it seems now let's look at one more reading from uh well interpreters commentary again it's three different commenters for interpreters i got here they're just different sections so let's see what i want out of this one um okay let's run back to the book of acts with this commentary okay so peter explains the ecstatic speech they're speaking in tongues and so on. The speakers are not drunk, for it is only the third hour, and the commentary tells you it is 9 a.m., and nobody is intoxicated that early. So there you go again. They're just letting you know, 9 a.m. Now look at this here. Maybe I'll read one or two more. Now, these ones are from online commentaries here. Barnes Notes on the Bible. For these are not drunken. The third hour of the day. The Hebrews divided their day into 12 equal parts. Now that's what they're saying in this commentary, but um, they reckoned it, however, they're saying, from sunrise to sunset. So you see, you know, as much as they deal with trying to tie it down to a certain time, they still end up, you know, usually coming back around to sunrise and sunset because that's that's how it would have been. Now think of it, people. When... when like in very, very early times and, you know, when man was just made. Let's let's pick, like, Adam. You think Adam was like, what, what time is my watch saying? Obviously, he didn't have watch and clock. He just went by the light of the sun because that's what the Creator had said. The Creator just made sun to govern day. Um, so, obviously, Adam is going to use the sun to tell time. He sees light, it's daytime. He doesn't say there are 12 hours here. No, no, the sun seems to be going a little bit earlier today, like half an hour earlier. It's like a gloomy day or two hours earlier if it's a really gloomy day um, based on whatever the sun is doing and the weather. He, he doesn't say, oh, no, no, with two more hours, something is wrong. No, he just knows the day is coming to an end. Why? Because the sun is moving away and the night is coming on. So Adam didn't go by no 12 hours. It's just whatever the sun was doing. So it goes, they reckon it from sunrise to sunset, this Barnes notes on the Bible is saying. Of course, the hours were longer in summer than in winter. The third hour would correspond to our nine o'clock, which Peter said the third hour of the day. It would correspond to what we call nine o'clock because for them it's the third hour because the day is just started just three hours ago around about six o'clock. But we have changed our time, and so now we call it 9 o'clock because we're counting from 12 midnight when we're sleeping. And it's funny how this modern world does it. Just like when they start the new year in January 1st, when things are cold and dead, as some has pointed out, and you're wrapping up your trees with cloths and fabrics and so on. In the dead of winter, when things are frozen and dying and leaves are gone and so on, they say, oh, it's a new year. But, there's, but the Hebrew year has it in around springtime when life is coming and things are starting to grow again. And, you know, there's a lot of freshness, not just in nature, but in your thoughts and your mind and so on. And it's the same way with the counting of the 24 hour stuff. They're going to start the new day at 12.01 a.m. when you are sleeping. You don't even know a day is coming. Notice with a system that says um, the day starts when the sun comes in, you are waking up. So when day or light comes in, you are also waking up to start the day, which means you, when day comes in, day is bringing life, and that's light and life and day is significant in Torah uh, as, as spiritual life and freshness and newness and salvation and things like that. And that kind of life happens when you also wake up to the coming in of the sunlight. As the sun moves in, you are waking up to new life in a new day, to start a, another day, which, you know, which goes along with what Torah is supposed to do. It's supposed to give you life, just like the light of the sun gives you life for another day. But they are starting 12 midnight or 12.01 a.m. They're starting the day with our present system here excuse me, when things are dead and dark and it's night time and everybody's trying to sleep. So in their system here, day is starting when you are in a dead-like state. 
which is anti-Torah thinking. It shows you that this world operates based on whatever goes on in the congregation of the dead. Just like they're in the congregation of the dead, they're trying to give you a day starting when you are in a dead state, when you're sleeping at 12.01 a.m. in the middle of the night. This world is truly dead. There's no life. No wonder the Most High breathed the breath of life into Adam, breathed his Torah, breathed life into him, which then lets you know if there were other people around, just like some say, um, that means that they were dumb, they were dead, but Adam got life and the people who was going to come out of Adam, they had life because he was supposed to teach them, but everybody else on the earth were dead. They were, they're dead because they have no light of life or Torah in them. So Torah actually is a powerful thing, a powerful concept in just the way it thinks and operates and creates stuff and gives freshness of life and wisdom. It, 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 it really is. Let's look at one more commentary here. Ellicott's commentary for English readers. Seeing it is but the third hour of the day, dealing with Peter again from Acts chapter 2, um, the appeal is made to the common standard of right feeling. Drunkenness belonged to the night, First uh, Thessalonians 5 and 7, but I won't bother read that. It was a mark of extremist baseness for men to rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink, Isaiah 5:11. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night, till wine inflame them. <laughs> early in the morning. I guess that's why that's why Peter is saying it's too early in the morning. It's just the third hour of the day. But um, yeah, so the commentary here now it goes on to say, um, were the disciples likely to be drunk at 9 a.m. and that on the morning of the day of Pentecost, after a night spent in devotion? and when all decent Hebrews were fasting. So basically the answer is no, they wouldn't have been doing it like that. So he's saying basically, yeah, it's, it's 9 o'clock a.m. So all these different commentaries are saying the sixth hour is about noontime, high sun, of this kind, it's very hot and so on, and you're getting thirsty and dehydrated and all that. And the, the third hour is also 9 o'clock a.m., which means that the Hebrews... In the Old Testament, although they started to change in New Testament times after the Hebrews were taken down so much and had spent so much time with other heathen nations in captivity who changed their thinking a lot because they gave in, to, gave in to it. And with the passing of time coming up to modern times, all this stuff had changed. But it seems originally it was the day was starting when the sunlight came in in the morning when you stretch yourself and wake to get out of bed around about that time. That's when the day starts. Okay, let me read one more now from, one more verse here from, uh, I hope I didn't read already, from Genesis chapter 31 with Laban and 39. Genesis 31, 39. But we know this is a story with Laban and Jacob and he's, Laban is looking for his precious idols that he loves so much with his whole heart and he's going crazy trying to find them um, because who can live without idols who loves them so much but this 20 years he says in verse 38 have I been with thee Jacob is talking now thy ewes and thy she goats have not cast their young and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten verse 39 that which was torn of beasts I brought not unto thee I bear the loss of it. So he's saying, I gave you the best, right? I didn't cheat you and stuff like that. Of my hand didst thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. So here again, Jacob is putting some kind of a difference between what is known as daytime, way back then in the Old Testament, and what is known as nighttime. Whether stolen by day or stolen by night. If day was evening, nighttime, morning, daytime again, and cut off at the following sundown, which would make it a 24-hour period from sundown to sundown, he wouldn't have been talking like this. And add that to the other scriptures I mentioned in the other videos on this topic that I did. But because they don't consider day to be night, running overnight from one sundown to sundown the next day, 
um, when the next day is closing. Out. No, they, he just says by day and by night. So those are my thoughts here. The day starts when the sun comes in in the morning. That's when the day starts. Shalom.